Hello and welcome back. So, we have been discussing about the pulsing techniques by using which uh, one can make the laser pulsed. So, we have discussed already cavity dumping technique and then we started uh, talking about uh, another pulsing technique that is Q switching. So, uh, uh, let us have a quick uh, recap. Uh, so, we said that uh, Q switching it represents the effect of suddenly reducing the rate of uh, energy loss within the laser cavity and then again uh, you know uh, making the quality of the resonator much better. So, in case of uh, you know uh, uh, a continuous laser, continuous wave laser, uh, if we want to use Q switching and make it pulse, what we do? We just uh, uh, you know block all the oscillations in the laser cavity and uh, thereby increasing the loss and uh, at a given time when enough population inversion has taken place, we allow the oscillation to take place once again that is round trips in the cavity and a short pulse laser comes out. So, uh, in this case uh, we already said that the pumping rate it has to increase you know increase so that it has it will uh, exceed the spontaneous decay rate. Okay, so, that we can uh, have uh, enough population inversion. And uh, another important thing that uh, we should mention here that uh, this Q switching that is uh, like we showed using a rotating mirror in the previous class. So, this mechanism be it a rotating mirror or something else whichever switches the quality of the cavity this switching rate has to be short enough. Okay. So, the switching has time period has to be short enough. So, for the time being uh, for the uh, time period when the you know uh, the cavity round trip is allowed that time period has to be very short. So, that we can get a short pulse. So, um, the last thing that we would like to mention uh, is uh, that the pulse repetition rate uh, we, we discussed about it uh, in the previous class. So, the pulse repetition rate uh, uh, that one will get will be totally dependent on the cavity length. Okay. So, uh, now with this knowledge what we will do? We will uh, look at the other uh, you know possibilities uh, by which one can achieve Q switching. So, So, in, in uh, real life the Q switching is done uh, by using some shutter. Right? So, it is done using some shutter. We have used a rotating mirror in the previous class. So, I will show you today how in real life this you know shutter mechanism is uh, done. So, uh, in real life this shutter that we use is not a mechanical shutter. So, not like a rotating mirror. So, normally it is not used. Instead what is actually used is something called electro optical shutter. So, you can understand that uh, there will be uh, you know some electric voltage or current be given to this shutter. So, that it can operate it can uh, close and open. Okay. So, what uh, is this electro optical shutter that we are talking about? So, this is essentially something called Pockel's cell. So, uh, we use a Pockel cell inside the laser cavity to get the Q switching. Uh, 
Okay. So, what is a Pockel cell? Okay. So, if I ask what is a Pockel cell? So, the answer is that Pockel cell, it is a cell uh, consisting of uh, a crystalline material such as uh, say KDP, uh, this is potassium dihydrogen phosphate, uh, a very uh, well known so called nonlinear optical crystal, uh, lithium niobate, etcetera, okay. which gives Pockel's effect. So, this is a cell which is essentially uh, a crystal, uh, something like KDP and uh, lithium niobate, and uh, that gives Pockel's effect. So, the answer is not that clear, right. So, we need to know what is Pockel's effect. So, for you know those people who do not know Pockel's effect, so let me tell you what is Pockel's effect. So, So, the Pockel's effect is, is a you know, proportional change or linear change in the refractive index within the medium uh, when an electric field is applied. So, it is a, it's a proportional change in the R i refractive index of the medium. Here uh, in this particular case, this is the crystalline material that we are talking about that is KDP and lithium niobate. Uh, when an electric field essentially this electric field is uh, quite intense in practice okay when an electric field is applied all right so uh, this one is a you know uh, linear change of refractive index upon uh, the application of a electric field or voltage right so that means if i uh, you know apply uh, v amount uh, you know certain amount of voltage then uh, there will be a change in refractive index then if i double this uh, voltage then this will also uh, the refractive index change also will be doubled so this is a linear process there are you know uh, uh, similar type of electro optical uh, you know materials uh, are present uh, uh, and uh, electro optical uh, phenomena that can be there uh, for example uh, car effect so in case of car effect it is uh, a quadratic dependence on the voltage okay instead of a linear uh, dependence so right now let's uh, stick to uh, pockel's effect which is related to uh, what we want to achieve okay so from uh, this definition of Pockel's effect, uh, what we can uh, figure out that if I apply voltage, I can change the refractive index. So, the you know propagation of light through the medium can be altered by applying the voltage onto this medium, and uh, you know not only this is just the propagation, but it can also uh, you know affect the polarization state of light. So, uh, I am sure that uh, most of you uh, are aware about uh, the term polarization particularly in the context of light, but uh, in case if you are not familiar then I will just mention in uh, you know a couple of lines. Uh, 
So, light is an electromagnetic field that means that it has an electric field and a magnetic field perpendicular to this. Now, if there are many many photons, the electric fields correspond to uh, each individual photon may be in the same direction or may be in other direction. Okay. So, if all of the photons have their electric field aligned in a particular direction, I call this light as a polarized light. Okay. So, their electric field will be oscillating in this uh, uh, direction. So, this is not only polarized, but this is called linearly polarized, because if the light is propagating in this direction and you are looking at uh, the light propagation direction, then you will see the electric vector like a line. It is also called a plane polarized light, because if you look at all the oscillations okay, and you can figure out that if you are looking from this particular direction, then you will see this plane okay, uh, contains all the electric field vectors. Okay. So, this is also called plane polarized. So, now uh, this Pockel cell, uh, when you apply voltage to it, it can alter the polarization state of light. What does it mean? That suppose I am coming with a linearly polarized light or plane polarized light, both are same, okay. and it, it goes through this Pockel cell that is my lithium niobate crystal or KDP, and I am applying some voltage to it. So, what will happen? It can actually rotate the plane of polarization. Okay. So, this is for linearly polarized light. Now, uh, okay, so let me just uh, write down. So, what uh, Pockel cell can be done? So, uh, Pockel cell can be used to alter or rotate the polarization of light, the light which passes through it. Okay. So, light uh, passing through it, let us be explicit. So, you know this much knowledge is good enough for now to move ahead. Okay. So, uh, just I will uh, you know remind you once again that uh, in case of Q switching, we are you know switching the quality of the cavity and thereby we are storing all the energy in the active medium. Right? So, this active medium stores all the energy in this very similar way to a capacitor which stores all the electrical energy. So, uh, you know this analogy should help you understanding this uh, Q switching process in a much better way. So, now <coughs> let us come back to the design of the laser cavity when we want to use the Pockel cell. So, what we have? We, we have a, a high reflecting mirror. Okay. You can use a, a you know uh, flat mirror, you can use a concave mirror. So, we have been using flat mirror all the time. So, uh, I will this time use a concave mirror. It does not matter, you can use a flat mirror here and it will do th the same job. Okay. Now, <coughs> we have the same active medium. We have the light source, which will pump the photons, pump the molecules to uh, excited state. And then I have my output coupler. I hope you remember what is an output coupler. Output coupler is the mirror, which is not 100 percent reflective, that is a trans partially transmittive. So, uh, so, essentially okay. so, assume that this is a concave mirror just like this one. Okay. So, normally what will happen? It will move back and forth and then I will get my laser output. 
as a continuous wave. Now, what I want to do? I want to place my Pockel cell. Okay. So, this is my Pockel cell, which I want to introduce in the cavity. Okay. And I want to use this Pockel cell uh, to act as a switch. So, uh, what I need to do for that? So, the Pockel cell alone will not be able to do it. Okay. So, if it has to act as a Q switch, we need something else. What is the thing? We said that we are going to use the you know property of uh, the Pockel cell, which is it can rotate the plane of polarization of a plane polarized light by certain amount depending on the voltage that is given. Okay. So, now within the you know laser cavity, the lights are you know uh, coming and going okay, uh, in, in within the cavity. So, if the light is not polarized, which generally may not be polarized, what I need to do? I need to place a polarizer. Okay. So, I will place a polarizer. Let me be even more specific, linear polarizer. Okay. So, and this is my high reflector. and this is my output coupler. So, this linear polarizer, what does it do? Okay. Uh, all of you must be familiar with the polarizer, what it does. You have done, done experiments in your, uh, you know, uh, I think plus 2 or maybe even in high school, where you have used uh, a polarizer to make an unpolarized light plane polarized. Okay. So, if you have a light which has its electric field direction oriented in all the possible direction, so they are random that is called unpolarized light. And from that unpolarized light, if you want to make it a plane polarized or linearly polarized light, what you have to do? You have to create like a gate. Right? So, through this gate a certain you know polarization direction will be allowed. Okay. And the you know outgoing beam will be linearly polarized. So, polarizer essentially does the same thing. So, it is made up of some you know like calcite uh, crystal and all which can uh, under a given uh, particular arrangement uh, can convert an unpolarized light to a polarized one. So, this linear, polariz linear polarizer that we are putting here, it will convert unpolarized light to a polarized one and that propagates in this direction now. Okay. Now, this Pockel cell, if I do not apply any voltage, then it does not do anything to the polarization state of light. Okay. So, just we will make a note. So, uh, without the application of voltage Pockel cell does not affect the polarization state of light okay okay so this we are making a separate note here. So, to start with I suppose I do not apply any voltage to it. Now, what I will do? So, the linearly polarized light will go through this focal uh, cell that is this crystal and it will go hit the high reflector, come back and then pass through. So, then I am not doing anything there. So, I need to do something so that this whole assembly of this Pockel cell linear polarizer and whatever you know else we want to put as a Q switch. 
Okay. So, what do we do? We essentially put another optics here which is called a quarter wave plate. We will not discuss in detail about the quarter wave plate, but all I will tell you that this is uh, an optics which converts a linearly polarized or which can convert a linearly polarized light into circularly polarized light depending on the orientation of the optic axis of this quarter wave plate with respect to the polarization direction of the incoming light. Okay. So, uh, just for your information, if you know, if this is the polarization direction of the incoming light and if this is the optics axis of this uh, quarter wave plate which can be rotated in this plane, then if this optic axis is at 45 degree, say I will call it plus 45 degree, then it will make one particularly oriented uh, circular polarized, polarized light. Okay. So, it can be like this. Okay. So, say right handed circularly polarized light. If I orient this optic axis to minus 45 degree with respect to the plane of polarization of the incoming beam, then it will again create a circularly polarized light, but now it in left circularly polarized. Okay. So, two opposite handedness, uh, two, two circularly polarized light with two opposite handedness can be created. Any other angle if I put other than this plus and minus 45 degree, then it will generate an elliptically polarized light just for your information. So, <coughs> this quarter wave plate if we place in between the high reflector and Pockel cell and if I orient its optical axis at 45 degree, what will happen? So, now I have a linearly polarized light coming from here. So, let us call this linearly polarized light it converts uh, not uh, so say it makes the light horizontally polarized. I can put my linear polarizer in whatever way I can. So, one of them can be horizontal. So, the you know plane of uh, polarization will be this one. Okay. I could do this one, I could do this one, whatever I want I can do it. Okay. But for you know uh, simplicity, I can choose either this one or that one. Okay. And uh, in most of the lasers, particularly solid state lasers, this plane of polarization is chosen to be horizontal. This is in most of the cases, okay. not necessarily in all the cases. So, this linearly polarized light in uh, linearly polarized in the horizontal direction will pass through the Pockel cell and then my uh, uh, quarter wave plate, its optic axis is essentially rotated a 45 degree with respect to this direction. What will happen? It will create a circularly polarized light, does not matter which one may be left circularly polarized light or may be right circularly polarized light. Let us take it is forming left circularly polarized light. So, the left circularly polarized light, so it will now form a left circularly polarized light and like this it will go and hit this. Once it hits a ref, you know, high reflector and comes back, what will happen? A left after turning back, it will come in the opposite direction and again it will hit the quarter wave plate. Now, a quarter wave plate can, can convert a linearly polarized light into a circularly polarized one. In a very similar way, it can also convert a circularly polarized light to a linearly polarized light when this is again uh, in a particular orientation, when the optic axis of the circularly polarized uh, quarter wave plate is in a particular orient orientation. So, what is happening here? I know that if I orient my quarter wave plate at 45 degree plus 45 degree I get R h 
uh, right circularly polarized light, if I orient it at minus 45 degree, then it is the opposite one, left circularly polarized light. Now, if I think in the opposite direction, so if I send in left circularly polarized light, it will be forming a linearly polarized light, which is now at 45 de minus 45 degree. If I come with a right circularly polarized light, it will come at plus 45 degree. So, now the light which is going through, I assume that that is created creating uh, a left circularly polarized light, right. And when it is coming back from the, you know, uh, the high reflector, it is now right circularly polarized light. So, after again passing through this quarter wave plate, light will become linear, not only linear, the orientation of this linearly polarized light now will be 90 degree with respect to the beam which is going in this direction. So, in this direction when it is going, this is horizontal, this is the electric field. Okay. So, this is the electric field of light I am talking about. Now, when this is coming back, that is it is coming back in this direction, the electric field orientation will be in this direction. Makes sense, because it is either plus 45 degree or minus 45 degree. So, if I go from right circularly polarized light to left circularly polarized light or vice versa, the linearly polarized light is going to shift by 45 plus 45 equals to 90 degree. So, what happens? I get a polarized light which is now coming in this direction toward the Pockel cell is vertically polarized. I started with horizontally polarized here, right? And horizontally polarized goes through this one, forms a left circularly polarized light, hits here, comes back, becomes a linearly polarized light, which is polarized in vertical direction. Now, it goes through the Pockel cell. Okay. Now, if the Pockel cell is off, that means if I have not applied any voltage, what will happen? Pockel cell will not do anything. So, the vertically polarized light will pass through the Pockel cell now as it is and then go and hit the linear polarizer. Now, the fun is the linear polarizer is you know oriented in this plane, because this is allowing only the horizontally polarized light. And now, I am sending a vertically polarized light, what will happen? This will block. So, no light will pass through this polarizer. So, light is coming and going through this one and then ultimately no light is coming out of the polarizer, polarizer will discard all the lights coming through. So, I am stopping the oscillation in the cavity, I am causing a loss in the cavity, correct. So, at this condition, my pumping is going on and it is creating the population inversion. Okay. So, this one we already have learned. Okay. So, by now you should guess that okay, what is going to happen. So, population inversion is created, it is getting more and more. At this point of time, when I feel like okay, this is enough time has you know uh, passed that I can now allow the oscillation to take place in the cavity, reduce the loss, increase the gain and have output. So, what we do now? We apply a voltage to this Pockel cell. Okay. So, we volt you know suppose this is the Pockel cell here and uh, what we do? We essentially we apply a voltage. So, how much voltage generally do we, we put quite a high voltage. So, I, I, I said earlier, so it is say around 4 kilo volt and for how long? I will use it for short time duration. What short time? It is approximately I can say 5 microsecond. So, these numbers that we 
uh, are using right now, they are actually some practical numbers. Okay, so that's why I uh, thought of choosing this particular number. So, for this short duration of time, this is five microsecond. Okay, my voltage is applied, and that means that during this period of time, my Pockel cell is active. Now, the voltage is applied in such a way that this is capable of cancelling the effect of the quarter wave plate. That means, whatever quarter wave plate have done. So, what, what quarter wave plate has done? You know, at the end, it has flipped the polarization of the light from horizontal to vertical. That is all it has done ultimately. Okay. Whatever be the detail mechanism, we have discussed about it. So, ultimately the effect is to flip the polarization. When I apply this 4 kV voltage here for this Pockel cell, which is say a KDP, it can cancel the rotation of the linearly polarized, you know, uh, uh, the plane of polarization from vertical to horizontal again, if I use an adequate voltage. And in certain cases, this 4 kV voltage is exactly that. Okay. So, sometimes this is called uh, uh, V pi by 2. Okay. So, that means, it is causing a flip of the polarization direction by 90 degree by pi by 2. So, uh, we are uh, out of time today. So, uh, we will start from here uh, uh, in the next day and we will talk about this one little bit more and also look at uh, other possible Q switching modes. Okay. So, thank you very much.